So we're going to dive in to our first feature, new feature of the year. So this is one that we've been asking for for a long time, and I am super thankful for the developers who've been working on this. They have been working very hard on this. Um, and so we're going to talk about prepayments. Another term that you've, I usually use with this is customer deposit. Um, this is when the customer pays us, and we need to record a payment prior to the invoice being created. Historically, a lot of times we've run these as negative AR, negative accounts receivable, right? But now they've got a workflow, in-product workflow for this so that we don't have to do a workaround. So some examples, online businesses that take a payment at checkout, you go you know, to Amazon, you pay them, but they haven't shipped anything yet, right? So that's a prepayment. In construction, when we take deposit against work to be performed, a contractor who requires payments for parts prior to them ordering it, those parts for you. So and I just add in here what the standard accounting should be. When you accept the prepayment, debit to cash, credit to customer deposit, we'll see this in a second. Then when you invoice the customer, it debits the customer deposit, right, to offset. That's where the customer deposit amount goes away. And then credits accounts receivable so that you can apply that against the invoice. All right, so let's see it. The look and feel of QuickBooks is not gonna change much in desktop, right? So that's something that we should all be thankful for, not super um, chaotic and, and crazy to look at. Um, so I'm gonna first go in and uh, create a new sales order. So this, um, this process, and I apologize for my screen being zoomed in so that y'all can see it a little bit better. This process um, starts with a sales order, of course, in our workflows, if you create an estimate first and then convert it to a sales order, this will still work. But the prepayment should be at the sales order step. And the reason for that is, right, when we say, okay, an estimate is just that it's a quote, we convert it to a sales order when customer agrees to move forward. And one of the ways customer shows they agree to move forward is to make that down payment, that deposit. So I'm gonna come in here um, and create uh, a new job do a quick add, and I'm not going to fill in all the fields. I really don't care about that, right? So we're going to do a job for installation labor, and it's going to be 110 hours, and the amount is going to be $44,000. I'm going to keep it right, real nice and simple. So when I save this transaction now, notice that I have a receive payments button on the top of my sales order. Okay. That is a new button. That did not used to be there, right? We only used to have create invoice and create purchase order. So um, uh, now we can go in to receive payments there. And I already missed <laughs> making sure you have it set up first. So in the preferences, so that, that button will be there regardless, but in the preferences, you do have to go in and set up the preference if you're going to receive prepayments. So when I come in here to edit and preferences, I come down to sales and customers, and then we have our yeah, sales and customers. Where is it? Accept prepayments. Um, well, oh, payments. I'm sorry. Under payments, sales and customers is later. Under payments, they have prepayment settings. They did move some stuff around on me this week. So, <laughs> so if I click into prepayment settings, you can turn on prepayments, and then you decide which account it's going to be posted against. They only allow you to post against a liability account, which is what the proper accounting should be. Most likely, a prepayment is going to be an other current liability because we are going to relieve the prepayment balance within a year's time. They will allow you to post it against a long-term liability, but most likely, it should be an other current liability. If you try to add a new account in here and put it as an other current asset or something, it will give you a warning and say you have to choose a liability account, okay? If I already have another current liability account set up called customer deposits, when you set up um, and, and say you are going to receive prepayments, it also adds into your chart of accounts another account called account for prepayment transfer, which they make naturally inactive. So that account will be set up for you. 
That account also should always have a, neg a zero dollar balance, always should have a zero dollar balance. If you have a balance in there, there's a problem. And I'll show you and talk about all that in a minute. So now I have the sales order. Notice down below, we do have prepayment applied and we also have a balance due. So that is something that is new, okay? I can click on receive payments and it takes me to the customer payment screen. It does have the prepayment stamp on it and there's a checkbox prepayment on a sales order here. Okay. Now, if I come in, there's not an allowance. You know how in a customer payment, whoops, in a customer payment, you are allowed to overpay. You can't do that here, right? It doesn't give you the option of what to do with an overpayment. You can also, one thing you can do is you can use this for math. So if I needed to say they're going to do a 50% down payment, I can multiply it times 0.5, do the math there. Um, but I'm just going to do it for the entire amount for now. Okay. And say save and close. Now notice down below here, it shows me the sales order type. That is something new. You would never have seen that before. Sales order type. When I come back to my sales order, notice it does say prepayment applied. So I have a $0 balance on this sales order. One of the things that they also added is when I go in to print, okay, I have the ability, it'll pop up this, this box and it'll warn you, you have the ability to add prepayment, meaning prepayment applied, and balance due to your sales order. And when you say yes, you want to add them, it will take you directly to the footer tab, which is great, right? Takes you directly to where you need to be. I like that they made that extra step for us, making it a little bit easier. They being the developers, right? That's smart. And then you can see how it's checked off. It is showing on the screen naturally, but you can also add it to be printed on the document. You can rename it too. If you call it customer deposits, right, you can rename it if you need to. Okay. Um, all right. So now we have it on a sales order. We took the prepayment and it's time to invoice the customer. So from sales order, you can create the invoice. Um, if I go into customers, I'm, you can also go in and create invoices, right? Um, and it'll pop up where you want to create it from. So here's my invoice. I have my sales order number linked. When I say save, it's going to tell me, just like if I had a negative AR, it's going to tell me the exact same thing. This customer has available credits to be applied to this invoice. Would you like to apply these credits now? And I can say yes. And when I do that, again, I'm sorry it's so zoomed in. It's just so that you guys can see it better. It wouldn't look like this, I'm assuming, on your screen. We have three boxes now. We used to only have two boxes. Now we have three. So they have the prepayments in a separate box. Okay, so you can see here's my prepayment that I want to apply to the invoice. I can say OK. It does give me a warning. Once you apply any available prepayment credits, you won't be able to make changes because they're making a journal entry for this transaction. I'll show you what that means here in a second. Okay. Now this invoice is marked as paid. And then we're going to look at the, uh, the debits and credits of what is happening behind the scenes. So let me just make sure that um, I did not miss anything along the way. Oh, one thing um, on the sales order, when we take that prepayment, when we go to reports here, we do, the transaction journal is exactly the same, right? The debits and the credits of the sales order are the same because the prepayment debits and credits are sitting on the receive payment transaction. So you're not gonna see anything different happening at the sales order. The transaction history on the sales order shows an invoice right now, right? Let me go ahead and duplicate this. 
um, and create a secondary one. I'll do it for um, 80, 88 hours so that we see a different number in there and say save. When I receive a payment on it for the 35,200 and say save and close. When I come into my reports and look at transaction history, you can see I have a payment linked to the sales order. So until the invoice is created, it is a payment link that is in the history. So that is something new. I can open up this payment. I always like to look at debits and credits. So let's see that transaction journal. It's hitting debiting cash, right? Debiting undeposited funds and crediting that customer deposits liability account that we set up, other current liability account that we set up. Okay. All right, uh, then let's go to that invoice that we have. On the invoice, when we look at our transaction journal, you can see what's happening there, right? It's hitting accounts receivable and it's crediting our um, revenue account. So exactly what we would expect to have happen on the invoice. The transaction that happens that links the two together, right, are when we come in and look at this account for prepayment transfer, it creates a journal entry for the prepayment, right? So we have our first journal entry from customer deposits to prepayment. And we have our second journal entry, taking it out of the prepayment account and sticking it into accounts receivable. I don't fully understand why they had to do these two transactions and they couldn't just run it through the customer deposit account and eliminate this account for prepayment transfer. My expectation though is something around the balance sheet out of balance because journal entries with customers and jobs, right, is kind of finicky. So my expectation is that they did it to be smarter, to have that extra step. Um, okay, uh, let's see here. So I wanna make sure that we cover all of these things. So I wanna look at these journal entries um, in here. So you can come in and mess around with the journal entry, like it is something that you can do. When you come in to delete it, though it will give you a warning that says you have to delete the prepayment right so sometimes you know when you go in and you try to delete a you a receive payment and they say no you got to go delete the deposit first it's kind of the same thing right you have to go to the prepayment associated with this and delete that or make the changes to that before you can mess with this one so again because the system is doing the in and the out because the system is auto-generating these two journal entries, the in and the out, into this um, account that's called account for prepayment transfer. This should always have a zero dollar balance, always. They do have it inactive, so it also shouldn't show up on reports, right? But just because, just because it should be doesn't mean that it will be, so we wanna be prepared for things like that. So, before I go into this, we do have a report um, that is they set up in here, and it's called the Open Prepayments by Customer Report. It's a great report to have. It shows a little bit more than the details of our workflow when we did customer deposits before, because it shows you the payment and the sales order it's linked to, and you can open up both of them. And it totals it by job. So here's the payment and the sales order it's linked to, payment and the sales order it's linked to. So pretty cool, okay? And if you had multiple payments, right, you'd be able to see all the payments um, in there. So pretty neat. So this is in reports, customers and receivables. We have the open prepayments by customer report. Okay. Um, now I, because I'm old school QuickBooks, uh, do, recommend, I'm old school accounting, I guess maybe that's what it is, not just QuickBooks, but I recommend reconciling every balance sheet account always. So even though this one should always go down to zero as part of your month end process, you should go in and reconcile this account. 
Since we do not have a statement, we reconcile it to zero, and you should be able to just say mark all and reconcile now, okay? So that's one thing that I recommend. That one should be super easy. On the customer deposits, this one would be a little bit different. I still recommend reconciling it. Again, always reconciling to zero because we are not getting a statement. Um, and when I come in here, I check off the ones that have cleared each other, and then that way I'm left with the balances only of what's left, okay? Now I do that because I can go in and do a custom transaction detail report for all time, totaling by customer, filtering for the customer deposit account, and then also filtering for cleared of no, and see, right, create a report for what is sitting in my balance, right? So it should be as of whatever, 1031 or whatever the date is that you're using at the end of the month. But that way I know and can substantiate the balance and who I have money for sitting in my prepayments account. Um, all right. So I think that that's it for prepayments. Um, where, let me get in our slide deck down. So the new feature is available in all QuickBooks Enterprise SKUs, so silver, gold, um, platinum, and diamond. Um, you can, one of the big benefits is you can now give your customer, right? So if, you're, if this is your file, you can give the client who paid you, or the customer who paid you proof of payment, proof of prepayment, because it's on that sales order. Um, and so now it's a feature instead of being a workaround, right? Like we did it as a workaround before, now it's a feature of QuickBooks.